Hi everybody, it's me, Carrie, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Farmington Hills, Michigan. I am getting my tablet set up so that I can see if you guys comment. If it chooses to let me, you know how it's persnickety. So, it looks like maybe I am set up. Let me see how that goes. So, I'm, a, I'm running a little late today. I'm so sorry. There's just... um. There's so much happening that um, I, I honestly, I just lost track of time. I mean, that's just the truth of it. So, um, so I apologize for that. Um, I am going to show you what I promised. Uh, we're going to use the um, <clears throat> paper trimmer to cut down one of these beautiful envelopes that uh, came with the the paper pumpkin this month. And I've had a lot of you ask, I'm sorry, you cannot order this paper pumpkin. Hi, Chris. Paper pumpkin is a subscription program. You can buy it monthly or a three month or a six month or a 12 month um, subscription. But you once once the 10th of a month has passed, you can no longer get that kit. And this kit, was so popular that as of normally yesterday, we would have been able to order refills. As of right now, no refills even for this kit. That it's so popular, they, they can't even do the refills. So um, we're really hoping Stampin' Up! does something to bring it back because it was just so freaking amazing. But if they do, I will tell you here so make sure you follow me here at facebook.com forward slash memory inkers. I'm also on YouTube. This will be uploaded to YouTube, memory inkers. Uh, my email is memoryinkers at gmail.com. Uh, if you shop at my Stampin' Up! website, memoryinkers.com. Please use this hostess code through the end of August. WJD3PP3S. That number will, or that of code. It's not really, it's numbers and letters, so I don't know what to call it there. Hi, Susan. Nice to see you live. Um, so anyway, I just want to make sure you guys know that because I've had so many people email me asking to please let them order it and can't I do something and I can't. It's totally out of my hands. I cannot get this kit for you. So I'm sorry. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim off just the thinnest amount off of this um, envelope just I'm barely putting it over the edge because I want to have as much of this envelope whole as I can so see tiny little tiny whiny so I'm gonna put that like that so the reason I did that is because now I have all of this so here's what I'm going to show you. I am making this card and I am going to make this card. So for this one, I could cut it off right here at the fold. I could do that. But I decided for this card I was going to make it a little bit longer. And so what I did was I measured from the curve three inches. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure from the curve three inches. Oops. Holding it in place is a good plan. So now I have this piece, which I will need to trim a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. You'll see that in a minute. Then this piece is only two and one fourth. Nope, two and one eighth. So I'm going to go to two and one eighth. Okay, so that's for this piece. And then I have this piece. This piece has these on the back. You can use some undo or something. You'll follow me anywhere. You're so awesome. <laughs> and then somebody said, thanks for keeping us informed. Chris, you are welcome. Um, speaking of informed, my daughter is still in the hospital, so please continue prayers. She is, she is 
better, but her electrolytes are low, and so um, they're not letting her out yet, and she's she's a stubborn woman. <laughs> she wants to go home now. She's worried about her puppies, even though they're totally fine. Okay, so now I have this piece. So we're going to do this card first, and as you can see, it is trimmed down quite a bit. So what I'm going to do first, because there is a very slight curve here, I'm going to set this on here until I can see where about the curve is. And I know I'm cutting some of this off, so I'm not going to panic about, I'm hoping you get, let me zoom. I can never see if I'm zooming right. Okay. There. So, wow, that's dark. My lighting is not so hot today. Let me see what I can do about that. I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. So I'm not too worried about down here trimming because it's not going to be that long, but I'm going to cut that off like that. And then I know that this is um, five inches, so I'm going to flip it over and go to five inches, trim that off, and then I'm going to go here and trim to three and three quarters inches. So now this is what I have, and you see it has that fold in it, but it's beautiful. So I'm not going to waste it. It's going to be a card front. So we're going to do that, and we'll do that one first real quick, because it's pretty simple. I am going to do it, um, did I forget something? I did. I forgot a piece of cardstock. Give me just a second. Okay, <clears throat> I told you I was scatterbrained. So this is this is Mossy Meadow, and I am going to trim that to four inches, which is, these are kind of standard when you're matting a card front, four inches by five and a quarter, because your card front is going to be four and a quarter by five. So I'm basically just trimming it down a quarter of an inch, and then this was trimmed down a quarter of an inch, okay? So, now, hi Pam, someone else said good morning. Kathy, hi. Hi, and, sorry, Chris. Yeah, nobody likes to be in the hospital, you're right. You are so right. And she is not a nice patient. I'm sorry to say that, but she's just not. I told them, I know it's illegal, but if you could please just handcuff her to the bed and not let her leave. Because, you know, legally they can't, if she wants to go, I'm pretty sure that legally they can't make her stay. But I reminded her of how sick she was. And uh, she lives alone, so, you know, ain't nobody going to be there if she decides to not feel good again. So this is Poppy Parade. And just folding that in half. I would definitely have a piece of basic white cardstock in the center. I don't think I grabbed one. I have a big mess uh, over there. Um, so I don't really know. Okay, so now if you look, you can still see that seam right there. And I don't want to see that seam. So I have some of this. It's called Simply Elegant Trim. It's basically a silver or a gold kind of like a twine. So this stuff, it's not, it, it doesn't like to stick. So, <clears throat> trusty tape. I am going to take a piece and I'm going to hold this over that um, mark like that. Okay, and then you got to hold it pretty tight because it, it wants to roll because it's round. And then I'm going to tape that as close to the edge as I can, rub it down. Then I'm basically doing the same thing over here, taking it, and it completely covers that up. Whoa! I hope I didn't knock something down I need. I probably did. Sorry, you guys. I'm still a little bit scattered. There's just too much going on. 
Okay, now it can roll and I don't want it to. So I know I'm gonna put a sentiment right here, like the one you see. So I'm going to just put some tape right there just to kind of hold that from moving too much. Then I'm gonna go ahead and glue this to the card front. I love this on Poppy Parade. I just love it on Poppy Parade. I think it really brings out the flowers. So see, I did a little bit different. So now I'm gonna do something different for this. I'm also, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm still going to, um, sorry, I'm just moving stuff out of my way for a minute. I'm still going to do the oval and, um, and the ruffle oval, but I decided that I am forgetting more stuff. Okay, here we go. I am going to recreate, I wanna show you guys how to recreate one of these. Now, you could use this as a template and just lay it down and do it, but I'm gonna use the oval punch. Um, and I don't have a punch that punches this out. I haven't looked to see if there's a die that does. So I'm going to just use my punch for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate it. Let me, let me lay that right there so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing. So I took, I have stuff everywhere, um, which is not unusual, right? I am taking the Daffodil Delight, which is a little bit dark, probably darker than I might want it. So I'm going to be careful with this. I kind of test it out there. That's not so bad. And I'm just going to go over the whole piece here with a little bit and my, my blending brush. So there, so now it's kind of mutilated, mutilated, modeled. Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, yes, she can sign her off. I know it's, it's scary. It's scary when they do that. So please pray that she will think past her boredom. Oy, oy, oy. Your kids are always your kids, even when they are grown women. And so that's how it goes. Now this is Poppy Parade. Again, another kind of dark color. So see, I'm going to test that out because that's pretty dark. But I am going to want some of that in there. And honestly, you know what? I'm happy. I like that. I'm good. I'm not even going to add any more. So look at how, I mean, it's different, but I, I kind of got a modeled effect just like that. Cool, right? Hi, Pam. So now I'm going to take the Memento Black ink and I'm going to stamp just a note. This is from that um, go-to greetings that has the um, many different sizes of the, of similar or the exact same wording. One of my new favorites. And I am going to stamp that right there. So now I have that pretty just a note. And my dual punch. And I'm gonna slide this in, center it there, pop it out. And look at how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? And now I have a piece of Poppy Parade that I am going to punch out the Ruffly Oval. That's a technical term for you guys, Ruffly Oval. <laughs> yeah, you can make your own tag for, for any wording and you can make it just as beautiful. I mean, this is kind of like, for me, this was like a V8 moment, if you're old enough to know what that is. I felt like I got hit with a case. How did I not think about doing something pretty like this? So now this is going to go on here like that. It would be just as pretty on the green, although I think the coloring is not quite right for the green. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on to the Poppy Parade with my liquid glue. like so and then I'm going to grab my dimensionals I think I'm going to use the small ones 
I just knocked over everything, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, luckily, it didn't go too far. Ivy, <laughs> what a day I'm having. Seriously. All right. I don't know where they are. Uh, I don't know. Here they are. I found them. I found them. I found them. As I may have stated to you more than once, if you are looking for the perfect demonstrator, you are not done looking. I am not her. I am so far from being a perfect demonstrator that it's a little scary. But sometimes silly is fun. So you're going to notice I'm not putting any right here because I don't want them to land on top of the, um, the, the rounded... It's not really ribbon. It's kind of a twine, I guess. It's but it's it's thicker, and so um, I definitely I don't like it to be on ribbon anyway, but especially this stuff because it's kind of thick. And then I want to cover up that piece of tape that I put on there. And now I have just a note. And um, this stamp set actually came with a little a little bumblebee stamp. So if you wanted to, you could stamp the bumblebee or like this one, you could add some of the um, pretty little bumblebees. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some of the die cut ones, but I wanted you guys to see, I got to figure out what I did with them. I wanted you guys to see that they, um, you could stamp them. Oh my gosh. Seriously. I'm like, oh. I, you know, I've got all this stuff together and I've got my stuff for, um, for my trip and, you know, I've got stuff to take to my daughter when we go there and it's like, oh, stuff. Oh, good, Chris. I'm glad that we have a similar plan. So, <laughs> or maybe I should say I'm really sorry that we have a similar plan. Okay. Oh, I do have my take your pick tool. Yay. So I've got a half of one here that I think... I'm going to go ahead and use that on the back of this little bumblebee here. A little half of a mini, so it's tiny tiny. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and put that one kind of right there. Kind of like that. And then maybe one more flat, I think. I'm going to put a flat one like right there. What do you think? Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe there, maybe there. All right, so now I'm just going to put a little dot of my liquid glue and set it on there. I could have popped it up, but I just thought, you know, maybe just give it a breather. Now, I was thinking about using one of these colors, but they don't really go very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of my, I'm going to grab these iridescent ones. Uh, you guys saw that I colored, these are the ones that I colored um, on that other card that I showed you guys on um, Saturday. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this big one up here a medium size one if it will let me lift where did it go here it is Put a medium size one over here and a little small one because you know you have to have an uneven number you guys know that there so now I've got some bees and some bling and you can see Two different colors. So I'll have to put this out as a this or that. So you don't have to answer that now, but you know, I think I might. This one has pearls. This one has the iridescent rhinestones. So, okay. So that's the first card made with the envelope. Now, put this away. Now we're going to work on this card. So this time I'm going to do it in, um, um, Mossy Meadow, and I want to, where are my pieces? Oh, here they are. 
I want to trim this down because can you see how it is like that? And this is too wide because it's the width of an envelope here. So I don't want that. So let me grab my paper trimmer again. Let's see what I can do about moving that. So I'm going to take my paper trimmer and I'm going to look at what I want it to have is a four and a quarter of an inch um, width for this because my card will be five and a half if that makes sense watching from the pool Amy that is so rude actually I'm very happy for you just not that happy <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is if you look if you look at this this is pretty close right here to five and a quarter I mean it's like spot-on so what I'm going to do is, I want it to be this way, I'm going to go right to here on, on the envelope, if you guys can see that. And I'm going to place my cutter at the top so it doesn't tear as it's going through the thinner spot. Now I have that, and then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to look and see if I'm five and a quarter, but I'm more, more interested in this than I am anything else. Again, push my blade up. Okay, so there we've got that one. Then remember this one? I want this one to be five and a quarter also. So I'm going to trim that to five and a quarter. And I think, personally, I might save this piece because you could stamp a sentiment on it, right? Right. You could stamp a sentiment on it. So, you know, if this kit taught us anything, it's make your sentiment backgrounds pretty, right? All right. So, now, here's how I did this. I took a piece of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. Thank you for sharing, Barb. Um, and I'm going to go to... Um, I'm going to go portrait so this is the eight and a half this is the 11 because I want 11 inches on here so I'm gonna take this over to five and a half I know I'm kind of zoomed close for the minute so I apologize and you've got this extra piece if you want to do something with it of course and of course you do now this is where it gets a little bit tricky I'm gonna set this aside for a minute I'm going to take the envelope flappy piece and I'm going to semi ignore where that fold is but watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my bone folder which fell. So luckily I have my class stuff out so I flipped this over because I don't know if you guys can see it but this is where the bump is. Okay. So I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to kind of carefully, so I don't wrinkle, I'm going to carefully kind of try to rub it down. It, it's not going to go away completely, but it will help a little bit to disguise that there is a bump there. I didn't want to do it on the other one because I wanted to show you the easy way to hide it. And then we go like this and it's almost impossible to see where that is. I mean, I can still see it, but I know it's there, and you know it's there. So hopefully your friends who get this card don't know it's there. And if they, you know, if they do, then they don't have to get another card from you. <laughs> I'm so mean. It's, it's kind of not nice. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to put this on here, and I am going to... I'm going to lick this first. Yay, so fun. Because why not use that adhesive? But I'm not going to depend on that adhesive for the card. So I'm going to go ahead and put little dabs on there. Just for security purposes. Now I'm going to set this on and I'm going to slide it to the edge until I get about the trim that I want. And I've got it centered up and down like so. Like that. Then... I'm going to cut live. If this doesn't turn out, we've got this one that I took a lot of time with. So I'm just going to follow this. And the trick is to use your, um, move your paper 
not your snips. And so as you're curving along, you're going to want to um, just let the paper move. Especially when you get to curves like this, just let it flow. Okay, so if you look, that's not too bad. For me, it's actually amazing. <laughs> that I was able to do that. So, now I'm going to take my paper trimmer again. Only this time, I am going to use the scoring blade. Still have stuff stuck in it. And I am going to go right to just um, the edge of it, this, this DSP piece, well, envelope piece, is going to go right to here, this edge right there, which is um, some undetermined amount of space. I don't know what it is. And I'm going to score that. Then I'm going to flip this over so I can see what I'm doing. I know I wanted it to be a four and a quarter inches wide, but you have to give it a little bit of um, zhuzhing for when it folds. It won't hurt anything, but like here's four and a quarter. So I'm going to go up four and a quarter, which I can still see down here. Right? Here's four and a quarter here. So I can still see that. And I can either line it up perfect or I can scooch it. And I'm going to scooch it just a tad that way. So it's four and a quarter ish. Okay. So now I have my folds for my card, okay? Then I am going to, I'm going to add a piece of basic white in there. You can stamp it. This is an old one that I kind of messed up. So I'm just going to put that down in there. You can stamp something pretty. I mean, there's some there's some pretty stuff with the stamp set that came with this paper pumpkin. Or you may have something else or a, a bigger sentiment or something if you want to put it on the inside. But I'm just going to kind of center that white piece right there. I'm going to score this really good. Then I'm going to take this other piece of the envelope. And going to set it right here. Now, here's what you need to think about when, when you're doing this. On this one, I, I left this piece. But on this one, I've decided I want to trim it off. You don't have to. We have all kinds of pretty um, dies that would trim that in a fancy shape and I'm not going to worry about that either. So I'm going to go to a quarter of an inch, okay, which is right in line with this nubby, basically. Close enough. Okay. Oh, that looks really crooked, doesn't it? Did I put this on crooked? I sure did. No wonder. Let's see if I can get it off without tearing it. Ooh, I don't know, I don't know. This glue, it's its friendly, but when it decides to start sticking, it is not playing around. It's going to stick. So, oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it does, it's not happy that I want to take it off. So, I just go a little slowly and see if I can just twist it a little bit. Yeah, here we go. So now I'm going to trim that a little bit more. It still doesn't look straight, but... You get this card from me, just to remember who you're dealing with. <laughs> Perfection is overrated, ladies, and any gentleman that might be watching. But see, I kind of think I, oh, I gotta glue that down. I kind of think I like it trimmed better. You guys tell me what you think. I think I kind of like, I like this being trimmed a little better than I like that. I don't know. But you could put another sentiment up here or something if you wanted to. So now here's the thing that I discovered when I made this card was that it doesn't really like staying closed. See that? 
It doesn't like it. It's not a friend. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go ahead and I'm, going to, I'm still going to use this piece and I'm going to use my foam and then I need to take this off and I'm going to use the same sentiment because it just fits on that label so well. Our Stampin' Up! trimmer is very cool. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it, Amy, but let me show you guys. Um, it's it's kind of not zoomed, but it does have a clear like coating on it so that this won't come off. And it has the space here. Now this white, I put, I put a piece of cardstock in there. I just glued it in so I could read it better. But it also has the arm that comes out so you can measure farther. So yeah, it's pretty nice. It also has this hole is so that if you wanted to um, like put it on a hook, if you've got like a peg wall. So yeah, it's pretty nice. I really like it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this sentiment and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use, um, for this one I used the um, uh, Blackberry Bliss, but for this one I'm going to use just a black ink. It's our Memento Black Ink. And for a one-of-a-kind friend. And you may remember that I edged this one. I do kind of like that because see how it sort of fades in when, when it doesn't. This one has where I edged it. This one does not. So I'm going to go ahead and edge it. And I'm going to edge it in the um, Mossy Meadow, which I forgot to pull out. So give me one second here. Here we go. So I'm going to grab my Mossy Meadow marker say that three times fast and you guys have seen me do these edges many times as a reminder it's an upside down V while you're doing it so that you don't um, accidentally color the front of it it'll slip into the back if you have any questions about that please let me know but see now you can see the edge a lot better okay so now this was my dilemma I didn't know where I wanted to put it to cover. I don't want it to cover stuff. So, but it's going to. I mean, it's going to cover it. There's just no way around it. So I've decided that I can deal with the fact that it will cover some of my beautiful flowers. So this is where I have to decide where do I want to put it. So I think it will hold best if I put it like right there. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to use some, well, I don't know where my regular, yike, I have stuff, I've got, I've got stuff, like, every freaking where, here they are, yay, okay, so I want to make sure I get the right side, so I'm going to just put adhesive um, dimensionals on this side, okay, so I know it's going to go like that, so the dimensionals can go about to this little bubble, but not beyond. So I want to be sure it stays, so I am going to put three of them on there, which is overkill, I know, but I want them to stay. So now I can do this. I haven't tested this, so we're going to just assume it works even if it doesn't, okay? And I'm going to put that right like so. And now, look, it holds it closed. It doesn't hold it closed great. Um, I know that you can, and then you just flip it to open it. You can take your card and sort of bend it a little bit more, like use your fingers and try to get... You can do it with the scoring blade too, but if you just kind of try to bend it in a roundy position, sometimes, because I've tried to do it with the score and you, you want it to be so close that sometimes it's easier just to take maybe even, um, I had my ruler out here somewhere. There it is. Um, maybe even take your ruler and put it like by it and just kind of get it to roll a little bit more if that makes sense. So 
So I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but it's just giving it a little bit more of a roll and then and then hold it like I'm pulling it slightly that way, just slightly. So now when I close it, it lays a little bit flatter. Obviously it lays flatter than that one. So you could put magnets on it or something. I actually tried magnets and um, it just, I, I would have had to put something here, which I could have done. Um, and then it came over too far. And that's why there's a B here because I tore the paper. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. So there is one of my cards today. And what did I do with the other one? Like I said, stuff everywhere. I don't know. I don't know what I did with it. Well, I don't know, but I'm going to show you guys later anyway, because, um, and I'll probably do this one as a this or that later too, just so I can see what you guys think. Anyway, have a lovely rest of your day. Um, on Saturday will be the, um, taped, uh, presentation for volume. Um, if you follow the, the volume, um, event, I will, after it posts, I will post it to my, um, to this, to this page, um, memory, uh, facebook.com forward slash memory inkers and, but it won't go on YouTube until after I get home because, um, it just doesn't load right when I try to do it on my phone. So, uh, anyway, um, please keep my daughter in your prayers, um, and, um, I will post stuff, whatever I can legally post, you guys, from the Leaders Conference in New Orleans. We've pretty much already decided that we're not going to be doing a lot because we understand that, uh, where we are, you don't really want to be wandering around at night, so, uh, that's fine. We're fine. I'm happy with just getting nice meals and putting my feet up every day because those conferences are long. I keep telling my husband, I really am working, I swear. Okay, you guys, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your week. I will talk to you soon. Bye.